Hello, I want to illustrate one simple point about passing objects around little objects basically instead of primitive values, especially between other objects. So this maybe isn't so necessary within like a class itself, but um, I think it's, it's usually a good idea passing things from class to class, so to speak. So this, for an example, let's say I have a function or a method, I'm in Python, and it's just called add one. It expects a number for now, we'll assume like a primitive, like an integral type, and it's going to return that number plus one, right? Easy enough, save it, run it, and then um, what I can do here is just take any number like five and add one to it. We get six, of course, do the same thing. We still get six because it's not mutating the value. It's just returning it, adding one, then returning it and dropping that value so effectively. All right, that's all fine and well. Well, what if we pass it like a string value of five? What happens then? Well, in Python in particular, it crashes. Okay, so what we can obviously do in Python is come in here and force this to be an int, save it, come back over here, and uh, do the same thing, and we get the same type of results. So anyway, that's one way to do it, right? Now let's say we have another function called def add one to string and what this is going to do is it's going to take a string I should actually that we're kind of assuming a string there and we're going to take that string and we're going to add a character value of one to it like this so I'll go ahead and save and run that and then I'll say add the long name one two string and I'll give it like a five all right, and there it depends of 1 to the 5, which is what I expected. And what if I go the other way and do this? Oh, it doesn't like that either. So, of course, in Python, the simple answer would be always convert that to a string. Excuse me, rerun it, add 1 to 5, and then it, we get the result we expect, right? But I would like to illustrate something without assuming I want to use these basic constructs but for the moment I want to kind of assume that Python doesn't have them and to do that I probably shouldn't even have mentioned the fact that Python even has those right because this is to like I said to illustrate a bigger concept in the most simplistic fashion so what if instead we passed objects into these and these could represent methods or global functions or whatever, right? Those things down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class called number. And this is just for illustrative purposes. This is supposed to represent uh, more domain-specific functionality maybe. And, uh, you know, a more real-world object that you would actually be creating for a program. I'm just trying to use the simple thing, like I said. So there's a number... And then you got to have a like a constructor method in Python. This is just the boilerplate for that, so don't worry about it too much. Self is kind of like a this. And then we're going to take in a value. And we're going to set our self dot value equal to that value, which is a typical little pattern in a lot of object-oriented languages. You'll have this, uh, you know, this is usually named like number in other languages you just call this the same name right for the constructor it would automatically pass in like a this reference so you just wouldn't even have that variable there or that parameter whatever you want to call it and then you'd have um just the value in this case and then you'd set like this dot value equal to this parameter value or argument value okay so that creates a number right with a dot value now if we want to uh get that number as a string or excuse me, as like we'll say as an integer first. Once again, this is obviously redundant in a lot of languages, but just to be illustrative, and I'll shut up about the illustrative part. 
okay as int and then oh it needs a self in python because it is a method an instance method so to speak okay so we're going to return um, an integer of self dot value and then if we come down here and say in or that's a no now as int and it's a method then it would work like that right so I'm gonna get rid of this string thing for now okay so what we have here is the same basic idea and of course we're imagining things to be bigger and badder and we have this this thing right here and it's going to take in an object and it particularly cares that that object has an interface which gives it returns it an an integral representation which it then adds one to all right i'm going to run it and then we'll go add first we need to create a number so we'll call it n1 for number one equals number one and then if we go uh n one dot value we can see it's equal to one and then what we'll do is add one with n one and there we're getting the result we expect okay cool and this is to show that now let's say that that was the initial requirements for our program was to you know just do this one behavior or whatever and because you watched my video you're like you know what i'm going to be on the safe side and just make that an object right so now when the next sprint comes along or whatever and somebody says hey you know what we really want to be able to append one to a a number as a string as well so we're going to come in and add that functionality add one um to number or to string right also pass it in an object and then we're going to return o dot and now watch one thing I forgot to mention is I haven't, we're adding this functionality and I'm not going to alter this existing implementation and I'm not going to mess with any of the existing, I'm only going to extend this class this is the goal here. So when you hear the solid principle open for extension and close for modification, that's what I'm really rolling with here. So this is open for extension, but these interfaces right here, no, don't mess with those, right? That needs to stay the same because that's what our existing program, which is represented by this one little function, which really could be like thousands of lines of code, right? Um, we want to extend our program with this functionality here. And the idea, of course, is because if something's fragile or rigid, it makes it like rigid means it's difficult to make the change period you know we don't have a flexible design and fragile means if we make it in one place it's likely to break in other places so of course if we didn't uh, it's easy to fall into like if else loops all that kind of stuff so this also avoids all that so right here we're just extending once again def add one to string we're taking in that object and of course we're going to do a two string we're going to create a two string method and then we'll just add a character value of one to that so I'm going to come up here and just extend this interface. I know some people have uh, preconceived notions for like to string, as string, whatever. Obviously, I'm not mutating the object itself. I'm just loosely using those terms, not following some absolute specific convention or anything. Return uh, the string version of our value. Okay, save it, run it. All right, now we're gonna create two numbers. We'll create a number one equals number one, of course. Oops, typo. Number one equals number one. And then we'll do uh, number two equals number two. And then we can just say like add one to n one. We can say add one, two, and two. And of course, we're getting the results we expect, which is nice. Well, let's say we have, let's try it as the string. So add one, 
to string no to string method uh, number object oh I did as string huh and now I'm doing to string add one to string good probably best to have consistent terminology right there of course okay let's get back to those create the number one create the number two all right add one two string um and two all right that's working add one to string and one so obviously everything's working pretty similar thing of what python's probably doing behind the scenes with the built-in stuff right but hopefully that's starting to illustrate how i was able to just extend the actual program and then just extend the existing class with zero edits being made to the existing program, so to speak, and, you know, zero modifications to the interface of the existing class. I'm trying to think if I should just leave it right there. Okay, one, I will, but I want to illustrate just one more thing just to kind of really drive it home. So we'll do number five equals number, and this is an oversimplistic example, so it only gets better. Uh, add, we can pass this one to both of these as well. And five, there it's, it's re adding one, it's converting five to a string like it should, or excuse me, to a integral value like it should, and then adding the integer one to it, returning the integral value six. And then we can do the same thing with add one to string. And it knows what to do there. So hopefully that helps. If it doesn't, uh, criticize me wherever you're watching this video and tell me it doesn't make sense or it does or somebody else thought of it or here's a better explanation or whatever. This is something that a concept in my head, I mean, I'm, it's not original to me, but obviously it's been around, but it's one of those simple concepts with like object oriented programming that I think people just don't utilize and this should be utilized on a regular basis. And there's so many people that are so quick to criticize object oriented programming as a failure and they don't even program like this. <laughs> and there's lots of other patterns as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.